What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We did have a little bit of an audio issue, so if the audio is not perfect on the intro, it's okay. We handled it before the reaction and the recap. Just wanted to throw that out there. By order of the Peaky Blinders, season six, episode number one. Oh, the last season. The final season of Peaky Blinders is here. It the went final countdown. so fast. I know. It went so quick. Yeah. These six season episodes, they really go very quickly and we're not even watching every day. You mean six episodes? Six seasons. episode seasons, yes. That's a tongue that's twister. I, that's what I meant to say. We're watching like twice a week and it's still going by super fast. So it's sad, but also kind of exciting because we're coming off of a finale that was absolutely nuts. It was bonkers, absolute bonkers. Mm -hmm. We had this whole grand plan and they told us and Everybody knew, and so it didn't work at the end. Finn, damn it. Like, he opened up his mouth, and yeah, that was really bad. Stupid I, ass I'm wondering, bully. I'm wondering what that's going to play like. Um, if I, they're going to be able to figure out who was the one to inform right. Mosley about the assassination attempt, or whoever helped him to kind of take out Aparama and Barney. That sucks. So that whole situation feels like it's going to be a mess because we've seen a lot of family drama and feels like the drama is at its peak right now because Michael earlier in the episode presented a whole plan to restructure all of the Peaky Blinders organization and Tommy's like, nah, I'm good. Just throws it into the fire, mm -hmm. causes some issues there. And then Polly, she also checks out. She's like, I'm done. I'm out. Uh, yes. Leave. I'm leaving. I'm gone. This is all just so insane. And how is she going to respond to the Aberama murder? What is going to go down with Tommy? Because at the end of the episode, he had lost it. And he was like going through this mist. And then he saw Grace. And then he pulled out his gun. And he's like screaming with the gun to his head. And then it just cuts to black. And it's like, damn you. Yeah. How dare you cut there? How <sighs> long was it in between seasons? I feel bad for everybody. I don't know, but... We're lucky. We get to just watch it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure about the time between seasons. Generally, it's longer than people ever want to wait. True. But with a cliffhanger like that, that had to have been torturous. So obviously, those that were watching the show live let us know what it was like coming off of that cliffhanger, the way all of that went down, and then having to wait for the next episode, the premiere of season six. Because, I mean, again, that finale was insane. And there was... Super skeptical from the beginning when they started explaining what the plan was. We talk about this all the time. It seems like when they don't tell us, everything goes smooth. Mm -hmm. But when they explain it to the whole crew, we're fucked. Yeah, it's the audience's fault. When there's too much communication, it doesn't go well. Mm -hmm. And this is a situation where communication got leaked. People found out what was going down and it was prevented. And I mean, this whole story... Just everything about it and the family and just what Tommy's trying to do. Because it puts Tommy in a really, really, really weird spot now. The fact that he's having these mental issues and this desire to whether he lives or, or doesn't. But it's like he went through all of this. Putting himself in a position that he doesn't believe in. Supporting someone he wants to kill. Yeah. But then the speech went through. The whole event went well. It like... It's like really uncomfortable the way things are going now with Tommy and what his possible mindset could even be, which is why he probably led himself to where he was at the end. But on a really positive and awesome, happy, amazing, shocking note, Alfie's alive. That was one of the coolest swerve surprises of a reincarnation that we've ever seen. That was pretty awesome. I, I mean, Alfie's such an amazing character. Like Tom Hardy just freaking kills it. Kills it. I mean, just hearing his voice, it was one of those things as Tommy's been hallucinating a little bit. It's like, oh, he's having a vision of Alfie. Like, oh, how sweet. And it's like, oh, wait. No. He's that's real. In his he's house, there. In Margate. Holy yeah. shit. And he's asking about his dog. And oh, that's, that, that was one of an episode full of absolute chaos. That was a really, really awesome surprise and a really just great moment. I did love the discussion about money. He's like, oh, well, you're taking care of my dog, so we can, like, let that go. Yeah. <laughs> he needed Alfie's help to cause a diversion during the failed assassination attempt. Which, but, it was a great diversion yeah. had Barney stayed alive. It was just one of those things where, like, so much time had to take place. Like, if it was just, like, an immediate thing. You would have done it. They would have accomplished yeah. their mission. But they needed certain things to play out. And it's like, Tommy, grab your fucking pocket wipe. Because dude wouldn't have made it in time to kill Barney. 
He would have been able to just execute Mosley and, and get everything accomplished and let that chaos ensue. Yeah. But the plan was long, it was drawn out, and they didn't get to it. So I can't wait to see where they're going with this final season. It's right. really sad and unfortunate that every show has to end. It's just the way it goes. It's part of the gig. But yeah, you ready to check it out? Yes. Let's go. Silence. Oh my God, it was empty. You fucking kidding me? Oh, he actually pulled the trigger? Holy wow. shit. He pulled the trigger. He has angels. Not yet, Grace, not yet. Oh. Arthur took the bullets out. On the way back, he said you stopped at a crossroads to throw up. I'd probably throw up too. You're not even a soldier anymore, Tommy. You didn't check your weapon. You're not a soldier, you're a coward. Oh. I heard you pull the trigger, leaving your family behind without a goodbye. She's mad, I get it. If you still need a way out, here are six of them. Holy shit. Honestly, I think I'd just kind of stay there in the mud. That's so fucked. Thank you, Arthur. Right? Thank you. That is a sight right there. Mother, the light passed through. Aww. Mom saved him. I wouldn't let me pass. Oh my God. As if there were to be another consequence. He's talking to his, I mean, not that mom saved him, but like, he's talking to his mom. Like they let you through to death. They wouldn't let me through. Mr. Shelby, I imagine you're curious as to who it was prevented the assassination last night. If you look out your window, you'll see a flag of truce. It's a unit of volunteers bringing the bodies of your dead to you to send to heaven in your own way. Wow. Last night's operation was carried out by soldiers from three Dublin brigades of the Irish Republican Army. We need to keep Mr. Mosley alive. That's all you need to know. Also, you should know that saving Mosley's life wasn't our only intervention last night. We've made some changes to the structure of your organization. It's a very Game of Thrones way to go out. You've had a crutch to lean on. Last night we kicked away that crutch. From now on it will be us that you lean on. The deaths of your people are your own responsibility because you consistently fail to understand your own limitations. Damn, dude. In his office, making phone calls. Yeah, who's the third body? Is it with Barney Abarama? Who? N no. What? I know that she's passed in real life, but like, really? See, I don't know what year this season was filmed. I didn't realize she was, the actor was not alive anymore. Oh, sorry. Yeah, she's passed, honey. Holy shit. Wow. Is that what the lady on the phone was saying? Your crutch was Polly? Well, it was your family members, essentially. Abarama, he, he leaned on him. He basically, they want him to take care of shit himself. It was the ambitions and strategies of one man that caused this. I swear in the name of Almighty God, no matter what it takes, no matter how many lies I have to tell, I will take revenge on Tommy Shelby. Oh, shit. That's a shot. Wow. Holy shit, dude. This is very unexpected. 
a shot. Mm -hmm, the eyes. Four years later. It's a long time. Four years is a big jump. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> it's an island. McQuillan, Newfoundland, French territory. Okay, mustache. Eyebrows. I must ask you a question. December 5th, 1933. Hello? Honestly. Oh, there you go. Hier soir, des ivrognes ont brisé mes fenêtres. Les pigeons sont rentrés à l'intérieur de la pièce et ma femme est en train de les faire sortir. Je suis un bon je suis entré. You want a drink? I'll have a glass of water, please. Water? I know. What? Windows got broke because a lot of people here are drunk and angry. Half the men on this island made their living bootlegging till today. The other half fixed their boats. Maybe you should take your water into the hole. Prohibition ended. Mm-hmm. Sure, they made a shit ton of money bootlegging. Now it's widely available. Fuck. You don't need me to bootleg it anymore. Je suis ici pour une affaire privée. Speaks French so beautifully. Où t'as appris à parler français? I would also like to know where he learned French. Oh yeah, duh. They was in France. I just never heard him speak it. I learned all the things in France. Island is crawling with your fucking commissary man. Closing our warehouses down. Throwing men out of work. Ten years our boat ran whiskey down the president roads to Boston. Now we have fucking nothing. And you sit in front of us and order fucking water. I ordered water because I no longer drink alcohol. Okay. I'm not going to drink a toast. You will raise your glass to the poor people of Mikonon, whose lives you bastards have destroyed. You are not leaving this bar until you have raised a toast to the people of Mikonon. Oh shit. This is very intense. The shots, the... I love the shot through the glass. If you had uh, read my card instead of Bernie in it, you would realize that this is misunderstanding. Now, I've been very patient given the circumstances, but you need to sit down and let me read my newspaper. Oh, God. Oh, Ooh, shit. Before this goes any further, please let me explain. I will not drink your toast, because four years ago I forswore alcohol. Oh, wow. No. Okay. You do not bring a knife Don't. to a gunfight, my dude. Oh, goddamn. Since I forced alcohol, I become a calmer and a more peaceful person. And more accurate. <laughs> Shit. Sobriety, folks. Sobriety. Now, my guests will be arriving shortly. I need to prepare the room. Can you show me where? <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. Excuse me. Wow. Who will I tell Robert? Oh shit, he hit a spit at his feet. Who is Michael rolling with? Hello, Tommy. I wasn't sure what I'd think when I saw you again, Tom. Oh, yeah. What do you think? Since my mother passed away four years ago, Tommy and I haven't even spoken. We've both been very busy. You've been too busy to punish the people who killed her. You know, Michael, when you're dealing with a very powerful enemy, taking revenge sometimes requires time. You have to pick your moment. That moment will come. Okay, tension. I wonder if Tommy ever regrets bringing him into the family right. at this point. We're all keen to hear what you have to say. I'm very much looking forward to working with you again, Michael. You look very well. You too. How is the family? <laughs> That's a lot of kids. Mayhem. <laughs> We're having this Christmas party early because tomorrow, me and Charles and Ruby are going on a big ship to Canada. We told Father Christmas about the party. He brought you all presents. Oh, yes! Do where the fuck is Father Christmas? I don't know. He was supposed to be here by now. What the fuck are you, Santa? 
Oh, oh Arthur. You better run. You better run. Arthur. A new opportunity. An opportunity I would like to share with people I know I can trust. Now that whiskey is about to become legal, the trade will fall back into the hands of capitalists from New York, Boston, and Toronto. When one door closes, another one opens with a different cargo. No, it's all over the fucking island. This is an island with no morals and no opinions, just a load of fucking boats with nothing to carry and nowhere to go. The reason why Michelin was used to run whiskey in the first place is because it sits outside the territorial waters of both America and Canada. Got it. That, my friend, is the finest opium in the world. Still dealing with the opium, okay. We will have to uh, take your proposal to your Uncle Jack in Boston. Perhaps we can meet after you've spoken with Uncle Jack, Michael, who I believe is your wife's uncle, Jack Nelson. Who knows things that can get him killed? Oh my God. I have a high regard for Mr. Nelson. He has a history I don't like me on. Jack Nelson's past is forgotten. Not forgotten. Fucking gone. No, not gone. Just your eyes from the records like me on. Give my regards, will you? Dude, the way Tommy handles business, it's like so nerve wracking. You haven't touched your drink, Tom. You know, since we last met Michael, well, I've become a better man. I now realize that whiskey is just fuel for the loud engines inside your head. <laughs> what is this guy, a fucking poet? Oh my God, all these fuckers need to die. I say the fog is gonna get worse. Better get off this island before it drops us here. What the fuck you want? Uncle Jack decides everything. And I decide when the meeting is over. So I'll sit down till I say, my fair. Put some fucking hair on your chest, huh? Oh shit. Holy shit. Good boy. <laughs> Give us all a poem before we go. Wanna hear a poem? What about you, brain box? Oh. Does Michael, like, forget who the fuck he's dealing with? Michael's always had this... Smug. Like, just arrogant I was angry confident. with my friend. I told my wrath. My wrath did end. I was angry with my foe. I told it not. My wrath did grow. And it's from the poison tree by William Blake. You won't have heard of him. Meeting over. Oh, and by the way, my friend, the police commissioner, told me that he'd spoken to his FBI liaison officer, and he told him that there is an informant in your organization in South Boston. <laughs> he drops like one last bomb before he bounces. Beware the man with the bleeding heart tattoo with money written in red. I love that when the fucking pound on the back dick. I gotta go. Like, what did you think, Michael? Yeah, you brought in this crew to like, you're gonna scare Tommy? Like, come on. Stop it. This time, I'll burn it. Get cut us off, I don't see an opportunity. What the bird? With the bird! That was dope. What a scene! Holy shit, that was tense. And just Tommy, per usual, like a boss, just handles himself very well. Michael thinks he could roll in there and be big, bad, tough guy. Nope. Can Arthur fail the Santa? Damn it, Arthur. How he has not drank himself to death. Come on, Arthur. Oh. Arthur. <laughs> I'm not Polly, but I am still your fucking sister. Christmas, eh? Yes, it's Christmas. Oh, Lord. So where the fuck are the fucking presents? Oh, he's using, using. Oh, God, it's not alcohol. There is a boat leaving the island now, heading across the border. When it docks at St. John's, a man named Michael Gray will board a ferry to Boston. Inside the briefcase is five pound of pure... Is he getting him in trouble right opium. now? Is he riding him the fuck out? My name is Mr. Jones. Oh, Mr. Jones. He just fucking got him in trouble! Oh, dick! Using the name that he gave him. Wow. That's wild. 
You gonna answer it? No, I don't work for him anymore. It might be important. That's why I don't want to answer it. <laughs> Hello? Mm-hmm. Fuck. <laughs> That is also how I answered the phone. <laughs> <laughs> this actress is just gorgeous. Ah, oh, fucking. Do you know who this man is? Arthur, you stupid ass. Come on, Arthur. His brother? Thomas Shelby says don't serve him opium ever again or someone will write Arthur Shelby's name on your chest with a bayonet. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> he does not put up with any of the bullshit. Damn, Arthur's really fucking... Yeah, he's in a bad place. Per usual with this damn show. This is Gina. So, what the fuck? <laughs> Busted! Tommy Shelby steps back into your life right away. This is what happens? No names in here. I'm sorry. Let's just call him the devil. <laughs> Holy shit. What the fuck happened, Michael? It's in hand. Whose hand? No, really. Whose fucking hand, Michael? Hmm? Huh? That's wild. Like everything else in this city, it's in the hand of your Uncle Jack. I need him to get the charges lifted and get me out of here. I already talked to him. He told me what the devil proposed. Tommy Shelby wants to do business with Jack Nelson. He wants to take on Boston. No one is taking on anyone. It's in hand. There are deals being made at a high level, but there are some people at the middle level and lower levels who cannot be trusted. Michael, this sounds fucking... Shut up and listen. Thank you. It was Tommy himself who warned us of the informant. We're guessing that the informant was the one that tipped off the police about- Oh. Nope. What's the point of ships and planes if you can't get away? Gina, in today's paper, you'll read about a man being fished out of the Boston Harbor with a bleeding heart tattoo and the name Maria written on his arm. Single shot to the head. Yeah, I know. I read it already. God, she's miserable. His death will lead to others. For this business to work, we must only use men we trust. And while the cleanup is being carried out, you must keep things to yourself. You talk loose to anyone, it'll be me in the arbor, and you'll be the Maria with the bleeding heart. Do you understand? Michael's so stupid. Tommy punked him so hard. No, fuck that. I need the truth. Why are you doing business with him again? There are plenty of men who can supply powder all over the world. I don't understand why it needs to be him. Some of my business with Tommy Shelby is unfinished. This is my opportunity to finish it. So speak to your uncle and get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, living large, huh? So colorful. This is so weird to see him in the Art Deco phase. Little man hitting the big sign. You like jazz? I don't know. No. You know what I mean? It's like somebody in black and white going into a room with color. Yeah, his environments have always been super dark. I have a message for your Uncle Jack. You know, my uncle's planning on buying the United States import license to all the best Scotch and Irish whiskey distilleries. He's on his way to London right now to make those deals. He's a very powerful, very impressive man. Before you tell me what you want me to tell him, I have a message from him to you. No deal. God, she's sucks. In England, when someone gets this close to Tommy Shelby, it's, oh, the horror. Oh, the desire to fall on your knees, open your mouth, and say, yes, sir, please, sir. So it's Uncle Jackie falling on your knees, for I? Oh, turn that around. <laughs> he says no deal. You smell a jail, Gina, and you drink too much. Yes, but booze is legal. <laughs> your white powder is not. Jack has friends in the government now. Do you have any idea of how far he's risen? Can't have white powder on his shiny black boots when he's on his way to meet the president of the United States, because that's where he goes now. It feels like a whole lot of one-upping. Go home, boy. Bye-bye, Mr. Shelby. Okay, call him boy, bitch. Oh, sorry. Before I go, you should know that it was me who tipped off the border police. 
It was me. Yeah. I'm the reason he's in jail. Changed her mood a little bit, huh? Yeah. I wanted to give your uncle a dilemma. His favorite niece's husband banged up in Boston for smuggling opium. What does he do? Oh shit, she opened the throat on that one. and has him released, how will that play in the Oval Office? If he does nothing, how does that play in South Boston? Oh, fuck you. <laughs> Got her. Stay here, deal here, die here for all I fucking care. And die in whose hand, Gina? Hey! My message to your uncle is this. If he doesn't want to buy my opium, I will sell to the East Boston Jews. Fuck you, Gina. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Do you want to start a fucking war? With that amount of opium, the balance of power between the Irish, Jewish, and the Italians would shift heavily in favor of the East. I have excellent contacts with the family that runs East Boston. The Solomon's family. Oh, yeah. Once you people have accepted that you must treat us as equals, then I think our families will work together very well. She's not so smug now, is she? Boom! Bitch! <laughs> Mic drop. I'm Hi, out. Hi, Gina. That is amazing. Amazing the way he's handled this situation. Mm -hmm. Tommy, it's Ruby. She's not well. She's got a temperature of 101. The doctor's just left. What did he say? He says he thinks it's flu. Tommy, he said it's not a good idea for us to travel. We can't board that ship to Boston today. That's all right, Lizzie, don't worry. You just book a new passage. And Ruby's feeling better. It doesn't matter if you don't get here for Christmas, just as long as you get here, right? I'll get this business done. You get here with the children, and then no more. And it'll just be us and the clean air. Are you okay, Tommy? Your voice, it sounds different. Oh, it's just cold. I'll get this business done in Boston. And that'll be the end of it. And then I just want to... I just want to pick Ruby up and hold her in my arms. I miss the weight of carrying her. I gave her a present early. She loves them. Oh, last night she was burning up. She was delirious. She kept talking. Uh-oh. And when she was delirious, she kept saying these gypsy words, so... Uh, Ticknamora. Ticknamora, oh, bang, oh, bang, over and over again. What did you say? What did Ruby say? Ticknamora. Something like that. What did she say any... Did she say any other words that you didn't understand? Oh, bang. Oh, bang. I don't know. Lizzie, did she say any other words in Romany? Fucking listen to me. She said she could see a man. Uh-oh. She was delirious. She was burning up. What the fuck is the matter? All right, listen, Lizzie, I'm coming home. Tommy, it's just a fever, love. Listen to me, I'm coming home. I'll be on the next steamer back. You keep her out of school. Tommy! Keep her away from the river. Don't let her ride a horse. I'll go near the horse. You listen to Esmeralda the same way you listen to a fucking doctor. Fucking gypsy stuff. Yes, it is gypsy fucking stuff! Is it? Yes, it fucking is! <sighs> and you get curly there. And you do everything that Johnny Dogs and his wives fucking tell you. Do you understand me? Holy shit. What the hell does all that mean? I don't know. Polly. Oh God. Polly? I know I'm trying to get out. They're coming for me. Cause he has blue eyes, not green eyes. No, it's something else. And something about her horse? Yeah. Is that the same thing like when, when he was dreaming of death was Grace and Black Horse? Son of a fucking bitch. Son American, Michael. I have to go back to England early. Let's make this quick, eh? Right? You just fuck people up and you run away. No, this business will continue. Jack Nelson is also traveling to England, to London and to Edinburgh to buy import licenses. How the fuck do you know where Jack Nelson's going? Well, I have copies of his itinerary. Letters from the President of the United States and his many mistresses. I have contacts in his organization. An Irish man with a mortgage is a powerful resource, Michael. You don't know you fucking well. <laughs> You're dead, Tommy. You're out of your fucking depth. You threaten to sell to the Jews. And I have contacts in this prison. These boys here will look after you during your stay. <laughs> I don't need your fucking people to look after me. Jack Nelson's getting me out of here. Oh, yeah? Is he? This is a letter. Yeah, give him this letter, will you? This is a letter from the president's personal secretary suggesting Jack Nelson keep you in here for a while longer. Fuck you. You'll be released eventually, and then you can execute your business with me as before. Our business being $5 million for a shipment of powder. And when the exchange is done, we can shake hands and go our separate ways once more, eh? 
So you didn't learn. When my mother died at the hands of your ambition, you didn't learn your limitations. I have no limitations. Oh, shit. I'm worried about Tommy now. According to Jack Nelson's personal accounts, he bought passage for five people from Boston to Liverpool. His wife, his mistress, President Roosevelt's son, himself, and Gina Gray. Gina's coming to London, Michael. Well, I will be happy to show the sights. Fuck! You fucking bastard! Perry! Wow. Damn it. Oh, dedicated. I know. Mm. Oh. I don't know when she passed, I gotta, but I'll, like. I'll look that up before we watch the next episode. That's so sad. That is very tragic and horrible because I didn't even realize that about her. Well, I mean, I, I didn't know until recent, but. I mean, we've seen her in so much stuff recently. Yeah. Because she was in Mission Impossible mm -hmm. and this, obviously Harry Potter. There's a lot. So I'll, I'll before we watch the next episode, I'll check and see or the chat will tell us. But, I mean, it's really ironic that Michael's the one who's, like, telling Tommy you didn't learn. Yeah. When it feels like Michael's the one who didn't learn shit. I'm like, you're just going to come at Tommy like this and think that you're going to get the best of him because you have this new squad? Like, no. <laughs> it's, it doesn't work that way, bud. But also, I'm scared that Tommy might be in over his head because... I, I Okay, so this episode made me understand that he's trying to get out. I gather that. How? Yeah. I... I don't, un I, that part. That opening scene was wild. Mm -hmm. Like that was so insane that he pulled the trigger and that Arthur pulled the bullets out and then Lizzie met him out in the mud and was like, here. And then we got that time jump where he's sober, clean, he's focused, he seems happier. I mean, a lot obviously went down in those four years, but wow. Mm -hmm. I mean. I'm not sure, how, like, I, I'm kind of speechless, honestly. This is a lot. Yeah. I'm scared. They definitely set a lot in motion with this first episode. What is going on with his daughter? Like what what was what was she saying that he didn't tell us, he didn't translate for us? So he obviously got really he, panicky and scared and it's like probably bad luck of some kind. Some sort or because or like a bad omen of some kind. And he probably doesn't want to repeat it. There was a man, right, with green eyes, mm -hmm. keep her away from the horse. Listen to Johnny Dogs and whatever his wife says, right? Several wives. Like, or, yeah, wives. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like a gypsy thing. Yeah. And so it's some kind of, it felt like a threat, something scary that she is seeing while having this high fever. And because obviously you hallucinate a little bit when you have those high fevers. Absolutely. So something came to her that is obviously a red flag. And she said some things that set off Tommy and got him really scared and nervous and needed to protect her. He needed to get home immediately. So, holy shit. The, the conversation that Tommy had in the room with Michael and his crew, the fact that these, like, five dudes walked in and he's just sitting there by himself. They're trying to bully him, intimidate him, like, and he doesn't take any. He, yeah. Like, there was no fear there. And it's just the way he handles business and talks to people – and then the conversation with Gina, where she thought she was like all hot shit and she was like all like bubbly and like confident and feeling good about herself. And then Tommy reveals the truth there. Yeah. And then her whole mood just crashes. It's like, how have you not realized who you're dealing with by now? Honestly, at this point, you know, who y'all fucking with? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Tommy's obviously through five seasons has faced a lot of adversaries that were maybe a little bigger than him. Maybe he was out of his depth in the past. But dude always finds a way to figure it out. And I'm wondering if clear-minded, sober Tommy is even more dangerous than the previous Tommy. Right. Because, I mean, the way his reflexes worked and the way his mind worked in that bar scene, the fact that he freaking hit the pigeon the way that he did. Yeah. Like, holy, like, he shot the clock, slashed the dude in the face, killed the flying bird. Like, what? I don't know if that was a pigeon, <laughs> a dove. Yeah, I don't, it, it was white. I know that. Yeah. But just the fact that his senses are heightened. Yeah. This might feel like a more dangerous Tommy Shelby, where in the literal opposite... We see Arthur, 
who is now as low as I feel like he can be currently. Yeah. That situation, like, I feel Drugs, like I say it every yeah. season with this guy. He is always going through it. He's always in a place where it's like... I just don't hey. understand how he's been able to survive this right? long. Just, like, on personal, like, things that he does to himself, like the drugs, the alcohol, the recklessness, yeah. the just how I mean, are Does he even know alive? where he's asleep right now? I don't like, so. he's, like, crashed out somewhere, and someone could be like, oh, let's just take this dude. Like, well, no, I mean, they, Ada, I'm not putting up with any of your bullshit. <laughs> yeah. This is fucking Arthur Shelby. Don't serve him any more shit. And if not, then he's with a bayonet. He's going to... Inscribe his name in your fucking check. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, Ada was kind of funny in this episode. I love her. Because everything's happening. There's absolute chaos with all these kids at the house. But, like, when business pops up with Tommy, who she's not in business with anymore, yeah. her response is just, fuck. <laughs> I'm like, that's perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. And, I mean, I thought that was a great foundation to set us off for this final season Feels like there's a lot of big business going on. The fact that, like, when they delivered those three bodies at the beginning, it didn't click right away. But then, as like the scene played out, I'm like, wait, it was only Barney and Abiram. Like, who's the third? It's fucking Polly. Like that impact that her death is gonna have on everyone. The fact that like Michael wants the revenge. Tommy's obviously a different person now. Obviously, Arthur's a different person now. And the fact that Tommy's, like, talking to her. I, I have a question, though. Did she pass while filming and they had to essentially create a death for her either and that, rewrite the sixth season? Either that or it happened before they started season six. And that's what I mean. Yeah. It was either they either within filming or I don't know what Polly's fate was going to be in this show. But I would imagine that losing her between five and six wasn't where it was going to happen. You don't give a character like that an off-screen death like that. So clearly, I mean, I'm going to assume, I'm again, I'm going to look it up after, but I assume that it happened between the filming, like before they started, and they had to rewrite everything or redo stuff because that's not the plan for a character yeah, like Polly. Yeah, Polly's so awesome. Yeah. She was an amazing character. Just the ups and downs and the roller coaster rides with her. You coined the phrase from the previous show but added it to this one that Polly's in a Polly. She obviously had a lot more power and control than the other one that you referenced in the other show. I'm not going to spoil anything. But she was like a boss, like a straight boss. Like a boss. Who went through a shit ton of stuff, a lot of trauma. The whole storyline with Campbell was absolutely brutal. And just the constant back and forth with the relationship with Tommy and that whole moment where it felt like she threw him under the bus and was like going to actually try to get him killed. But then they swerved us and they were still working together was amazing. I mean, Polly's definitely one of those characters that's going to go down as one of the coolest characters in anything that we've seen. Just her story, her like she every I feel like every episode or every season progressed, she looked more and more fly with her outfits. Oh my god, every single time. <laughs> she looked amazing. But just everything about the character was so well done and obviously she's been in a lot of stuff. She's a phenomenal actor. Like, so rest in peace, Helen. I would have loved to see her longer. I mean, she's everything that we've seen her in. She's been awesome. Yeah. And I mean, this probably is her top. Mm -hmm. I would imagine. I mean, her role in this show was so good. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she was probably behind Tommy. She's probably the number two character in the show. Yeah. I'd put her ahead of Arthur. Yeah. In terms 100%. of like importance. And I mean, no one else is in terms of the family has lasted as long. I mean, I put her ahead of Ada for sure. Like, I feel like Polly was probably number two to Tommy yeah. and as much importance. And I feel like the phone call, I know you said like killing Abarama and Barney. I feel like she was directly speaking about Polly because Polly held shit together. She did. She was and, the glue. And I think the call, whoever that was on the phone, I don't know who that was. I don't remember but I think she was specifically talking about Polly being the crutch. Yeah. That that crutch is gone. That Polly was that for Tommy. And, I mean, she was. If she kept everything in order, she kept a lot of the chaos organized. And when things were getting a little out of hand, even though she caused some of it herself, I felt like she was always there to kind of, like, she fixes it. ring in the family a little bit. Yeah. So, 
I mean, the loss of obviously the actor is going to be massive, but within the show, talking about this show, not having Polly around anymore, we already saw it in this premiere. It's going to have huge implications on this story. Yeah. So definitely going to be missed for sure. Yeah. So anything else? No. All right, y'all. You guys share all your thoughts. Leave your comments. We'll see you guys later for the next one. Have a good one. Bye.